And I'm going to read our affirmation, and then I'll ask you to read along with me. Within and as the oneness that is all life is joy. As I see the oneness of all, I am one with this joy. I share that joy with all today. So let's read this together. Within and as the oneness that is all life is joy. As I see the oneness of all, I am one with this joy. I share that joy with all today. Thank you for joining us today. This is Reverend Bobby offering you a moment to anchor and center on this beautiful holiday, this day of Christmas that beautifully has the possibility and the potential to anchor into us knowing that the Christ consciousness is represented by the birth of Jesus, the Master Teacher. So as we just anchor in this oneness, I just invite all that are listening and watching right here and right now that there is only one. There is only one power and presence. And we call it by many names. But it is that universal energy, that energy that flows in through and as all things. And I know that we are one with it and part of it. So as we just open this time of words and sharing by the beloved ministers of these two communities we call Namaste and Seal Beach, we just anchor in this time and know that what we are about to proceed with is truly held in that divine energy. That we're being pulled towards a greater and greater expression of ourselves, both individually and collectively. And I just affirm this right here and right now. So as all who listen to what is being shared going forward in this beautiful holiday service, virtual, just knowing that we are all love and that we are all one. And so it is. Amen. Hello, Namaste and Seal Beach Centers for Spiritual Living. Happy holidays to all. My name is Reverend Veronica, and I just want to welcome you, welcome you to this holiday season and welcoming to the upcoming 2023 year that is before us. And as we are embarking on a new year and a new adventure together, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what it means to shepherd in, shepherd in a new community, shepherd in a new year, and what it is like to be shepherds. And the first thing that comes to me is that we first need to be shepherds of ourselves, to be shepherds of our well-being, to be shepherds of love and compassion for our humanity. Yes, we are, you know, children of God. We are whole, perfect, and complete at the cellular level. And we are walking upon this earth with a nervous system and with our um, history and ancestral um, lineage within our, our nervous system. And so we bring that to, um, to life itself. And so when we can bring compassion to our own humanness and that we're not perfect, um, that creates a space for us to shepherd in a community that can do the same. So when we are compassionate and accepting of the parts of us, I like to call them our crunchy parts, um, it creates a space of acceptance to others. And when we can create that space of acceptance and compassion, it, it, we become shepherds for the community and we can learn and, and hold that space for others and their own crunchiness. And then that allows us to walk together as shepherds. You know, shepherds are, are like the boundaries, the guides that help along the way. And sometimes we meet you know, people that help guide us in back in, and then we'll keep going on our journey and we'll meet another guide. And that's what we are for each other because we are birthing a new community 
we are birthing and and restructuring something that's been in place for many years, thousands of years, the top down power structures that that we have seen and we've grown up in. We are redesigning from nothing. And that's so exciting, so exciting to use the tools that we know, use the law, use the law of love and the creative process to birth through us, through us, each one of us, to birth this community of shared leadership and of shepherds of love and shepherds of compassion. And that is what I am so excited about in 2023, because we cannot be and stay the same as individual expressions of God. We cannot stay the same when we're birthing something new and dynamic. So it's almost like what is being called from me in order to be that shepherd of our community. Now that is exciting. We get to grow and express ourselves in a whole new way and like grab each other's hands and hold each other to together as we walk this path together. So I am so excited for our communities as we embark on 2023. I want to wish you your family, your loved ones, all a healthy and happy and joy-filled and transformational 2023. May you grow into a better and better expression of yourself and may our community grow into a better and better expression of itself. Thank you so much. And I'm so blessed to be a part of Namaste in Seal Beach. Thank you. So this is a happy holidays to our communities. Greetings to all. Thank you, Seal Beach and Namaste for joining us on December 25th, the Christmas holiday. And tomorrow night actually is the last day of Hanukkah. So as we come to sort of the climax of this entire month of holidays, um, it's a pleasure to be part of your lives this Christmas day, which is Sunday. Absolutely. So we wanted to talk a little bit today about throughout the year, the, the sort of theme for all the Centers for Spiritual Living has been living in everyday wonder. And this month, the specific monthly theme was community. And we wanted to talk about this at a macro and micro level with respect to um, how is community, what does community look like or feel like the beloved community in 2023. So John and I have been talking about just what has been happening. So I'm going to turn it over to John to talk a little bit about what we've been doing the last six months as two communities coming together as one. Well, for me, um, it's been a year now since I've been interim at Seal Beach and truly remarkable talking about living in everyday wonder is to be in awe of this community and how it's transformed from, you know, the fear and anger and angst of the pandemic and losing a minister, and then moving into a place of stability and an openness to really consider other possibilities of how we can come together in community. And um, in some ways, our essence has been distilled into recognizing that we have to learn to uh, communicate with one another at a deep level. As we talked about in the rabbi's gift of recognizing extraordinary respect as a key piece and what would happen if we treated one another that way. And so we've watched this slow evolution of deeper communication between Seal Beach and Namaste. And it's been my great pleasure to meet so many new people and meet Reverend Bobby and become friends with her and just see the possibilities of what is possible with this um, merger consideration. And so a lot of exciting things are happening and I'm just really proud to be part of it. And it has also been 
uh, elemental to my spiritual growth. It's forced me to go deeper and, and ask those deeper questions and to challenge myself with all the things that are unfolding and trusting in this creative process that we call God. John, you and I were talking earlier about the fact that you mentioned distilling and it feels like through the pandemic, we've been compressed down to the basics, basic core of who we are. And if our community is to see the future as communities, what's really been interesting through this journey is I know for me, when I began in it, you know, coming out of whatever phase pandemic that was, which is really a, a more of a retreat personally and collectively. And if we've been coming out of it, those that have been in community have looked at this as an interesting opportunity in light of this compression, this um, distilling of who we are. And I keep thinking that what we're left with is something to build upon. And some of the um, collaboration workshops that we've done this year with respect to what is our purpose, what is our vision, our shared values. And there's even now sort of this excitement moving forward. Here we have been distilled of here. Now we start the next phase of it, which is I'm thinking what to say to community to not want to rush through this precious time. Yes, that's very important. Um, you know, what it points at to me is this uh, longing to connect that remains as powerful now as ever. And for some, it's a longing to go back to how things were before. And I think if we can just set that aside and recognize that there's something more that wants to unfold here, mm -hmm. something that really addresses this longing in a deeper manner. And we've seen it in all of our exercises, as you were saying, through collaboration and uh, communication and all the values is this resonating with this longing and recognizing the longing isn't just in how I can be more, it's that recognition that I can be more through community. I can be more by uh, being in a deeper relationship with the other, with each person that I'm meeting, a deeper relationship with all of life, which is really the, the charge moving forward that we not only take care of ourselves, but one another, the environment that we live in in all of life. And so it really goes to what is really possible if all of our community members were resonating on a level like that. One of the things we've noticed, I'm sure, and it's been in every community, I've talked to ministers all over the country with respect to a lot of our communities have become more passive through this as, as far as their participation in community. And we've, in some respects, collectively, as a as a as humanity, in some cases, we've become spectators of our journey rather than participants in our journey. And how we evolve is relational. It's everything. It's not getting the car we want or the house we want, but the relationships that I have with myself and the relationship I have, how I am relational in my own world speaks to that core creative power that we have, which is I create by making choice and I make choice in relationship. And I think that uh, can really be leveraged to understand that we've just tapped into this creative power, mm -hmm. this creative intelligence that we call God, that the answers to every difficulty to every, the solution to every problem is really in that relationship with the other because the experience of the other fleshes out the experience and the, and the possibilities of what that connection is that we're really seeking. That longing is answered through that relationship. And that's the real place that we want to go in community, at least from my perspective, moving forward because that's where we can begin to thrive and a thriving organization naturally grows. Mm -hmm. When you think about the um, sort of milestones in our evolution as a humanity, those shifts have come when people have come together 
to decide what is in the highest and best for whatever's happening right now. And so when we only think, if I only think about myself in this journey, then I'm going to be able to create from a very small place. When we think about meditating, when I meditate by myself, it's great. I mean, I meditate, I, I have a really pretty good experience. But when I meditate in a group, it's kind of an example of where I can go deeper. I can experience more because what I'm feeling, another person's feeling. So mm -hmm. there's an amplification, right, of feeling. And it is from feeling where we create. We do make choices, but we make choices from feeling. From a much different place. Yeah. If we're resonating with what the other person is feeling, we may be able to see something that we have, haven't imagined in ourselves. And that's the power of uh, community and the power of relationships. And so for you know this time of year where we get very um, introspective because we are recognizing that, that Christ consciousness within us, the, the, the recognition of being born again to a new idea, I would urge our community to start looking at that in themselves is, can we deepen our own relationship with spirit, with this Christ consciousness, with this recognizing that that Christ consciousness is the anointed one, the blessed one, and seeing that that is really the possibility within each of us, if we're willing to open, open our hearts wider than we could ever imagine. I was listening to a podcast recently with respect to the difference of the movement that we're looking at going forward as a community where it's more of a flat organization. It's more of the community owning itself, where we're moving away from a minister centric organization. And I was doing a little research with respect to, you know, the master teacher, Jesus, and, and how he created community. And honestly, he was not the, lead, the head of it. He was actually teaching people how to teach. He was creating leaders like Mary Magdalene and Thomas and a host of folks that were out there teaching themselves. And what was interesting, it was so different than what the, um, um, the leadership like John the Baptist had where you followed him. And when he died, the movement died. And isn't that so similar to what's happening in our communities as the minister leaves and the movement dies? And what we're trying to do is look at how can we be more sustainable. And as long as everyone looks to the minister and then the minister leaves or there's a transition or whatever that is, it's as if we've put, again, the finger pointing to the moon, we've put the power in the finger rather than the fact that we are all the moon. And, and you know, um, Paul was really instrumental in developing, you talked about teaching, of teaching people to gather in small groups, right? And focus on this Christ consciousness. And they did it while breaking bread. And so, you know, it, for me, it just resonates as family of a community really getting together and breaking bread together to really focus on the relationships of the divine, of blessing the bread and, and blessing each other. And, and, and the company and celebrating that. And I think that speaks to that longing for connection that is present in this community right now. And the solutions that we're all looking for is how to fulfill that longing are all present right in this community right now. But we have to tap into that and find a way of tapping into that, not because of ministers uh, endowing us with the knowledge but recognizing that the knowledge is already there. That we have everything that we need. And I, I love, that. yeah, I love the example you use of Paul because mostly in Paul's writing, he really didn't mention Jesus as the person. He mentioned Christ, the Christ. He never really talked a lot about Jesus, the man. He talked about what he taught, not necessarily who he was. Yeah, and there's an opportunity there to go deeper just in that. Mm-hmm. You know, what is that Christ consciousness within each of us? And it seems really appropriate to bring that up today. Especially because it's the celebration of the birth of Jesus, but it's the birth of the Christ consciousness. It's the birth of the consciousness. The world changed after that because of the revolutionary way that Jesus 
thought and taught and expressed himself. What were we reading, Bobby, where it said the uh, the age of Christianity died in 320 AD? Absolutely. Because that's when the church came in and, and shifted the focus away from Christ and into the, the hierarchy of, of a church structure. And we've been living with that ever since. And then maybe it's time to go back to that primitive Christianity. Well, it is because really what Christianity did at that point was they adopted a model that was based on the Roman model. So it became Roman Christianity rather than, you know, there were hundreds of sects of Christianity at that time and they chose one, but the Roman, the Roman government is what influenced the structure of Christianity. And it became the patriarchy, which eliminated women in the church. It became the hierarchy, which meant that someone was at the top and the intermediary. And we don't need that. And hopefully through this, as we pull ourselves back away from that similar hierarchy, that our community starts to see within themselves, the beloved community sees within themselves, that they are the Christ consciousness. Well, in the 19th century, Walt Whitman said, the day that the priest is done, they've done their work. Every person shall be their own priest. And I think that's a, a signal that perhaps we're ready for 100 years, 140 years later to listen to that uh, we can listen to each other and, and distill the wisdom that is present in every person. Because if we can do that, if we can learn to break through this divisiveness in our culture and, and really listen, that's why we have two ears and one mouth, listen twice as much as we talk, um, and and really become uh, aware that the other person is just a reflection of whatever it is that you're going through, whatever you're feeling is present in them as well. And it's your opportunity to recognize that that is the divine spark that we all share. How important is it, based on what you just said, is how do I see one another in community? How I can see the mirror in everyone you know, being reflected back to me of who I am. But if I don't see others in my community as part of my the evolutionary journey for myself, then I'm missing out on the fact that it's not what happens to me. It's how I see it. And now what do I do with it? And I love that you said the mirror because that's a fundamental shift from focusing our lens on everything that's happening and pointing a finger and uh, reducing it with a, a, a fine magnifying glass, and instead considering that what we're looking at is a mirror and really challenging ourselves to whatever we're feeling because of what we're looking at is really ours to deal with and ours to come to terms with from the perspective of this too is God, this too is good. Yes. This too is me, and I demand to see the blessing in it. Exactly. What can I, instead of looking at it happening to me, what can I, how can I use this? How can I up-level my own consciousness so that I can see when something happens? Because sometimes, obviously, we know that I may call something, oh, it's happening to me, something bad. For some, it looks good. So right then and there, it should tell us that there's something in here for us. And can I use the event or situation in my life to learn from it? and to move past it and move into a greater understanding of exactly how the universe works and how life unfolds. And, and that's very powerful, Bobby, because I let, love what um, D Reverend David Alt said, is when we're in a situation and we feel that we are triggered in some way, perhaps instead of saying triggered, it's a signal. It's right. a signal for us to pay attention that this is for us, that this is a signal from the divine of a choice point. As you, as you pointed out, we're always making choices. Right. And here's an opportunity to make a better choice than we have before. So if I use that word, which is something hits me in a way that is troubling or frustrating, what's the first thing I can ask myself, which is, is what I'm seeing real? Is this really what's happening or is this just an old story playing out for me? And most of the time, it's exactly that. It's the and, and the universe doesn't care. The universe is impersonal. It just responds. 
we're the ones that are personal. We're the ones that personalize it all. That also that doesn't mean that we don't step in and help one another. That part of being in community is to have that kind of where that village kind of feel where we're looking out for one another, not just the ones in the four walls, but we're looking out beyond our four walls to how can we be the beneficial presence in our communities. And, and that's that's a significant challenge. It, it, is. it isn't what we've asked of our community before, of stepping up into that greater um, responsibility and that deeper commitment to our own spiritual growth. I mean, in the in the past, I've looked at um, our organization in some ways of being, um, I look at three characteristics, spiritual ignorance, spiritual intolerance, and spiritual arrogance. And I can see that, and maybe it's just the human condition, but we're ignorant of the choices that we make, for example. We're indifferent to what other people feel. And we're arrogant because we feel we've got the best playing going. And all of those don't acknowledge the other person for who they are of, of embodying as much wisdom and intelligence and love and compassion as we imagine ourselves being able to. Yeah, it's, you know, it's going to be, I'm actually, I'm so excited for the new year with a sense of what is possible here. And I'm very conscious right now of the fact that that there's an invitation for me to be different too. For me to look at how I can be a minister that's much more effective, which may, may be completely different. And am I willing, the answer is yes. Am I willing to let go of the old model so that our community can be that powerful presence in the communities? And yes, yes. And I really appreciate that about you, Bobby, because that's also taught me as I've gone through this interim experience, not only with Seal Beach, but to see how those different models that I've assumed that people want and the challenges that they present and the cha basic challenges for me to change my thinking and to be open to possibilities rather than saying, I know what's best for this community. Right, and I think it puts us in a position to have to know, and, and most of the time I don't know. I'm just asking questions to figure out because I can't, I don't know what's another person's journey. I don't know the answer for other people. I can only test and try things out for myself and say, here's what I did, you know, and someone else in the community does the same thing. That's what our practitioners do. That's what other people in our community are testing and trying out. And it's really challenging me in a good way to step back and go, what am I here to do is to always look at where, how spiritual principle applies and encourage others to, to look at it for themselves. And that's the same possibility that's within each of our community members. The difference is, is that Reverend Bobby and myself has years of experience to, to simply put our hand up and say, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me go back to my spiritual practice here. Let me go back and ask a better question. Right. And re let that resonate within me and trust that that guidance is far wiser than anything I could co come up with on my own. Right. And how much more powerful is it when, when people you know, come up with their own answer? Yes. One that fits them in their lives and one that supports them and one that really puts power not the illusion, but authentic power back into the individual, which says, all I need is a community to support me. I don't need someone telling me how to do it. And, you know, that's what we've seen through this collaboration process is people rising up in that recognition, that recognition of where the power is. It's not in a minister. It's in that sharing of thoughts and feelings and ideas and seeing how those resonate and produce even greater possibilities. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that excitement in our community. Yes, same here. So final question, John, as we give our folks a, a, a message to consider for, the, the, for our January coming, which a lot of exciting things are coming is, what, What's your intention for the new year as being involved in this to support the community? What's your intention going forward? And anything that you'd like to speak to, to 
I, I struggle with the word advise, but encourage our folks to look at and to be present in, in the new year. So one, what's your intention? Two, what do we want to encourage our folks from the communities to sort of ground in? Well, my intention, of course, is always for the highest and best of our community. There's no doubt about that. And I'm willing to support our community through whatever they decide to do. And with that being said, is the, the I let my imagination run wild with the possibilities of what this community can become, not only uh, between Seal Beach and Namaste, but as a model for um, uh, for spiritual communities beyond our region of creating something that um, other people want. They, they'll say, I want what they, they have because it can be so powerful in bringing us together, whether we call it an intentionally inclusive community or whatever it is, but, but uh, leveraging the relationships and the wisdom and the talent that I see in both communities and somehow um, letting that just rise up and speak for itself. Mm. And for myself, I, as far as what I want to be in the new year is to really just show up as love. For me, that's without the judgment of what it should be or shouldn't be. And to really allow the community, which is also love, to step into its power and become what it came here to be, which I think it has the potential to be. And so some of that is stepping back and just being present as the space or the container, holding it all as a container for folks and encouraging folks not to try to rush to that destination, to really steep in every uh, moment shared, every, if it can't do it every moment, every meeting that happens, if it can be with, with whatever prayer I have for the community is to encourage that we don't put a stake in anything and say, this has to happen because we'll miss out we'll miss out on something even greater. I love that, Bobby, is creating that container where the community can learn to love one another more deeply than, than before. Awesome. Well, John, Merry Christmas to you and Kath, and thank you so much for, I'm so grateful to have you in uh, my, my family's life and the family of the communities that we've come together. I really appreciate who you are. Thank you, Bobby, and I feel the same about you and all the wonderful people in Namaste. It's been such a joyous journey um, to, to just meet you and everyone else. And, you know, uh, both of our communities have such powerful and loving people that um, success is guaranteed, yep. whatever that looks like. <laughs> so happy holidays to everyone that listens to this message. And just know that we love you all and hold you in our prayers for the new year. Be well.